What's up, Night Owl? Steely here, back with another brilliant review, this time of the console in the cloud, Google Stadia. To start things off, let's talk about what Stadia is and what Stadia isn't. Stadia is an app, plain and simple, but it functions like a console, just like your Switch, your PlayStation, or your Xbox. The only difference is Stadia doesn't have a physical presence in your home. It instead exists in the cloud and you open an app on your phone or your computer to start gaming. This isn't Netflix for gaming though. You still have to buy the game and add it to your library. And it's here that I would like to note that Stadia will be free in early 2020. The free version of the app gives you 1080p resolution with 60 frames per second. And the premium subscription Stadia Pro is $10 a month and it gives you access to 4K resolution, 60 frames with surround sound, discounts on certain games and additional free games regularly which at the time of recording is Destiny 2. Something to note on those free games, you will lose access to them if you cancel your subscription, but you'll be able to get them back if you renew your subscription at a later date. However, you will not be able to retroactively claim games that were given out while you were no longer subscribed. Now, just for clarity, if I were to cancel my subscription right now, I would lose access to Destiny 2. If I renewed my subscription at a later date, I would be able to play Destiny 2 again and keep all of my progress from before. But if somebody was to start their subscription at a later date when Destiny 2 is no longer available, they would not be able to access it. So from here, things may get a little complicated, so I'm gonna try and keep this information nice and neat and concise. In order to play Stadia on your PC, you only need to open a Chrome browser and navigate to the Stadia homepage. From there, you'll see the list of games that you have available. You simply click play and the game starts up, you're good to go. It's important to note that this is not operating system dependent. You can open up Google Stadia on a tablet as well as on Linux. In order to play Stadia 2 on your phone, you're gonna need a Pixel 2 or better, like Pixel 3 XL, and you'll also need a controller with a Type-C port, like the Google Stadia controller. If you don't own a Pixel phone, you can still use the app to browse the store and buy games as well as change your settings. In order to use Google Stadia on your TV, you're gonna need the Stadia controller as well as a Google Chromecast Ultra. The standard Chromecast will not work, it has to be the Ultra. Now the number one concern people have using this app is the input lag. And for me, this was the deciding factor as there would be no point going forward if the input lag was unbearable. So I tested the input lag extensively with and without the controller. I live streamed several hours of these tests on Twitch, link in the description, and the VOD is still available for anyone who wants to see these tests or the setup process for both mobile and the TV. And I'll note that my net speed was 25 down during the stream. Using the Stadia controller, there was no noticeable input lag. I could have been playing the game locally or on the cloud and not been able to notice the difference. Keyboard and mouse had a slight input delay and I could feel that little bit of drag when I was aiming down sights in Destiny 2. The input lag was tolerable and you can definitely play games with it, but I would avoid any kind of competitive scene if you're gonna be using mouse and keyboard. I tested the mouse and keyboard input delay for about eight hours over the course of these two days that I've had Stadia, and I would say that it's a solid enough foundation to move forward without too much worry. Now let's talk prices. Now in the Stadia announcement video, they boasted not needing to buy a console to play your games, but you're shelling out a console's worth of money in order to get all of the features available in Stadia. The Stadia controller will run you about 70 US dollars, which is pretty typical for a controller like this, but this controller does not have Bluetooth, which is understandable given the tech, but just know that if you're gonna be using this on Steam, it's gonna need a wired connection. The Chromecast Ultra also retails at about 70 US dollars, and this allows you to cast 4K HD video from your phone to your TV. This one's a bit of a mixed bag as most 4K TVs have apps built in that let you stream 4K, as well as the ability to cast from your phone. I'm not gonna make this video a Chromecast Ultra review, but for me, this thing's only function was to throw Stadia up on my TV. And finally, the Pixel itself. The Pixel 3 retails for about 400 US dollars, and I'm not gonna review the phone. I like it, it, it's a good phone. So with all that, it's hard to say whether or not Stadia is worth it, as each of these things, with the exception of the Chromecast Ultra, has value on its own. If you're interested in all these Stadia features, you can shell out 130 US dollars for the Stadia Premier Edition, which gives you a Chromecast Ultra, a Stadia controller, and three months of the Stadia Pro subscription. So with all that out of the way, let's go over some of Stadia's advantages. The most obvious advantage being if you buy a game on Stadia, you can access it across several platforms and operating systems, and you don't need to use your own hardware or storage space. Google would like Stadia to be available across all screens, which would free up a lot of your PC's resources, which brings me to my next advantage. 
If you are a streamer, you can put a lot of your normal gaming workload on Google's shoulders, therefore freeing up your own resources for your stream and being able to stream games you normally wouldn't be able to because of hardware restrictions. This means that you could open an old beat up laptop and as long as it can run OBS and a Chrome browser, you'll be able to stream high quality next gen gameplay with little effort on your end. Now this next point is thinking a little more long term, but it's worth mentioning. The time for physical copies of games and consoles is coming to an end. And whether you like that idea or not, that's the direction that the gaming industry is moving right now. At that point, you won't need to upgrade your PC or your console every few years. Games will just evolve naturally regardless of the hardware that's available commercially. This is just something to consider and it's by no means definitive. I'm sure that the success of Stadia and xCloud will have an impact on the future of cloud gaming. Now let's go over some of the nitpicks I have with the app. First up, the big one, the low hanging fruit. There is only a handful of games available at launch. None of them are new and most of them are full priced. This is an issue that I feel will correct itself over time. As new games come out, you'll be able to choose Stadia or your preferred platform. But for right now, just take your free Destiny 2 and wait. My next gripe is the 4K, which is only available on your TV through the Chromecast Ultra, and the browser only puts out 1080p. I'm sure that'll change over time as well. My next issue is the requirements for mobile gaming. Now, as I mentioned earlier, in order to play Stadia on mobile, you're gonna need a Pixel 2 or better, a controller with a Type-C port, a C to C wire, and your phone needs to be connected to the Wi-Fi. You won't be able to use mobile data to game. These are a lot of hoops to jump through in order to game on mobile. Overall, I would say my experience with Google Stadia was pleasant, and I would definitely recommend using the app when it goes free early next year. Now, the Premiere Edition, I do have a hard time recommending. The value is there with the Chromecast Ultra and the Stadia controller, but how much of it are you gonna be able to use? Do you have a 4K TV? Do you have a Pixel phone? Do you plan on getting either of these things? Once the app goes free and it's available on more phones, it's a no brainer, but only get it now if you don't mind suffering that bleeding edge of new tech. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, you know how YouTube works. Hit those buttons, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you wanna see reviewed next. And if you wanna see these reviews take place live, I do stream on Twitch Monday through Friday, 6, 10 p.m. Central Time, link in the description. Come by, ask questions, let me know what you think. And as always, See you at sundown.